Okay, welcome back. We're on page 927 talking about town hall meetings. Town hall meetings are not mandatory, right? Just saying. You don't force people to show up at these things. But, you know, you could have like a, a State of the Union address. Start with, you know, a welcome and an introduction, those kind of things. Introduce your team, even though they may have been there for quite some time. Gathering feedback. And, and there's some, there's some, if you've ever done any type of scenario where you're asking people for feedback, there's a certain words you ought to be using and and I'm not here to teach you that, but you read the book, it's pretty decent. And uh, perhaps seek out uh, other places on how to solicit real feedback. Uh, it, it, it's tough, it's a, it's a human nature issue, it's tough. Okay, some sort of show and tell, you can say, hey, let me show you this new cool thing, or let me show you how this works, and, and just and it could be of interest to you or them. And some sort of a meeting review, and then some sort of a closeout. And so this town hall meeting, you know, it's probably a town hall meeting for other topics. But so you may have 10 or 15 minutes or maybe 30 minutes to talk about your stuff. Okay. So on page 929, they do talk about how to get good uh, feedback. You know, asking questions like, uh, again, this is good stuff. Um, if, if you could change one thing in the IT department, what would it be? That's, that's a good question to ask. You know, what's the worst part of the existing automated system that we currently have? And then record everything. You're not in a position at this point when you're soliciting this information. You don't ever say, well, that's a dumb idea. I'm not writing that one down. No, 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 no. You write it all down. Even if it's a dumb idea, even if you're never going to ever implement it, you still have to say, thank you. That's a, we'll, we'll, we'll think about them all, right? That's what I would always say. It's like, great list. We're going to go back and look at those. Even some of them are going to end up in the trash. I would never tell them that. Newsletters. Okay, this is where you do positive PR, but quite frankly, it, you know, it's a push model. Uh, it, they're going to look at it as spam. It, it, they're going to ignore that stuff. I mean, I know I did. Uh, I still get newsletters from the university talking about, uh, you know, accounts receivable. And I'm going, that's of no interest to me whatsoever. I just delete them. Email blast. Okay, look, don't get in the habit of sending regularly scheduled emails to people. That they're going to immediately go, oh, not him again. Geez, spam. So even if it was something important, like, holy moly, we're going to shut the email server down tomorrow. If, they, if you send so much email to them, they're going to think it's spam. They're never going to read it. I, okay, no, no, let's go back to real life. Okay, real life. They're not going to read it anyway. Okay, I'm just saying. If you send out a blast email to everyone, say, oops, email is going to be down. Um you know, next week or something, uh, you're going to, they're just going to call and say, Hey, email's down. You go, don't you remember that email I just sent you? Uh, okay. All right. One of the things is don't bury the lead. Okay. This is not a journalism school, but for God's sake, if you're asking them to do something, don't put that in paragraph three. Okay. Like you must go here to this website to register this or your access to the system will cease. That ought to be like the first line of the first paragraph, not paragraph three. Not, well, we're doing a new system and it's going to require you to blah, 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 blah. And then on the third paragraph, you tell them what it is you're supposed to do. Eh, most people are going to be scanning this thing going, yeah, whatever, dude. And they're going to delete it. Okay. Brown bag lunch is what we did. We did met, meet in the conference room for lunch. You bring your lunch with you and we're going to do a topic. And it would be a topic of anything they wanted. For example, the first one we did was... Email, I mean, uh, Excel macros, okay? Somebody heard something about an Excel macro and they went, hey, I, I saw this guy hit this little button and, and it did all sorts of weird stuff. You know, can you teach us about that? Okay. And then we said, okay, next time. So the next time we did one, I think it was mail merge. You know, they had a bunch of admin staff and we had a, like, they were sending a letter to a list of five people. And uh, so they were just typing it out five times, you know, you know, changing the, the address and printing and changing the address and printing. And so we showed them how to do mail merge. And again, teachers, we were teachers. And so we would ask them, what would you like to see next? I saw this really cool transition on PowerPoint. How did they do that? Okay, that's what we'll do next. We'll talk about how to set up some really cool transitions on PowerPoint. We even had a, a PowerPoint styling uh, thing about okay don't over don't go overboard don't make it animated all this junk you know you, you, they want in my world 
I want them to focus on the, the me doing the presentation and not the slides. So my slides were kind of minimal, right? Just saying, okay, that kind of stuff. We bought donuts and said, hey, we're having a meeting in the conference room. You know, brown bag kind of thing. I'll bring donuts. It's like, ooh, right? That's how this thing works. So again, brown bag where you're there to teach them how to use the stuff they have, how to make them more efficient. L let me just, one more thing, okay? I know I'm kind of babbling here, but just bear with me. Um, let's say a typical office environment, all right? An office worker who does, you know, Microsoft Word and email and PowerPoint and Excel, okay? Which would be a better amount of, of more bang for the buck? Going in there and upgrading their, their PC to make it, you know, 25% faster. Or spending an, a couple hours with them, showing them all the software tricks and hints on how to do their job better. What do you think? Is it hardware that's going to make them more efficient? No. No, it's not. Getting them to teach them how to do their own job better? Yes. That's where productivity improvement gains happen. Making the machine goes faster barely registers on the productivity improvement meter. But saying, here's how you can automate this task. Here's how you can cut and paste from this screen to that screen. Something as simple as that, you'd be surprised. You know, how, how in the world can you get typos in this serial number? Well, you know, there's a bunch of numbers. Why didn't you just copy and paste from this document? and put it into here and they go, oh, you can do that? That's what I'm talking about. You being a teacher is part of the, the perception and visibility issue. They think of you as being a helpful person, not just to them, but for the entire organization. Okay, I've done enough preaching. We are at the end of this chapter and we'll see you guys again in the next chapter.